Hi all, I want to talk about power series, which is the main thing we want to use all of the stuff we learned about series for. This is leading up to when we will have a really powerful tool. So first I want to remind you what polynomials look like. They are sums of multiples of powers of x. So 4 times x to the 0 minus 3 times x to the first, 2 times x squared, 7x cubed, and so on. All of these things are um, uh, all of these things are polynomials. Okay. Um, so I want to um, extend that a little bit, and also say things like this are polynomials, where instead of x we have x minus a, or um x plus something, we'll think of that as x minus negative 2. <laughs> okay, so we're going to call those polynomials as well. And polynomials, everything is easy with polynomials. Derivatives are easy, integrals are easy, um, finding critical points is easy. We spend most of our time on polynomials because they're easy. Uh, okay, so here's the key definition. A power series is an infinite polynomial. So it's exactly the definition of a polynomial, except now we let the sum be infinite. Okay? 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed forever. So that's the sum, k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k. Same summation notation, same kind of formulas, only difference is now there's a variable x. But it always falls in this form x minus a to the index, or something some, something close to the index, okay? So here we have 1 over k factorial times x minus 1 to the k. Each term looks like x minus 1 to a power divided by some number that you can figure out from the index. Here's minus 1 to the k times k times x plus 1 to the k. 0, this is alternating minus x plus 1 plus 2x plus 1 squared, and so on. Okay? Uh, in general, we will write this series in summation notation. Sum, usually k, usually starts at 0, so we get a constant term. So this is one of the reasons why starting at 0 is so helpful, because if we're going to write out x minus a to the k, then uh, the constant term is k equals 0. So there's some coefficients which will depend on k, and then x minus a, which a will be a number raised to the k, which is the index. We will call this a power series centered at a. Okay. So in this example, this is a power series centered at minus 1. This is a power series centered at 1. And this is a power series centered at 0. So when I write a polynomial, 1 plus x plus x squared, I mean that as a function. You give me an x, I plug it in, I give you back an answer, right? And you can graph that and understand it as a function. When I write a power series, if I plug in a value of x, I get an infinite series. Right, so if I take the power series 1 over k factorial times x minus 1 to the k, and I plug x equals 3 into it, I get 1 over k factorial 3 minus 1 to the k. Wherever I see an x, I plug in a 3. 3 minus 1 is just 2. <clears throat> so I get this infinite series. Like all infinite series, I can ask whether or not that converges. This happens to be one in our last Zoom meeting we showed converged absolutely. Okay, so when you plug in x equals 3 into this power series, it converges absolutely. You can try lots of different every value of x and ask, for which values of x does this converge absolutely and for which doesn't it? That's what we're going to ask. Um, and wherever this series, whatever values of x the series converges at, 
then what it converges to is the value. So this would be a function that's defined wherever the series converges. And it's going to be an interesting question where that's defined. And first, let me tell you the form of the answer. So this is a fact. Um, we will see why it's true when we do examples, but for now, just take it as a fact. Every power series, if you look at where it converges and where it doesn't, you get the same behavior. You get an interval centered at A where it converges, right? So if A is some point on the number line, then it's going to converge in some interval whose center is A. And we'll call the distance of A to the endpoints R, the radius of convergence. So if it were two dimensions, all the points within a distance R of A would be a disk, and R would be the radius. For an interval, all the points a dis distance less than R from A is an interval centered at A. And you can say more simply, it's all the points between A minus R and A plus R. Okay, so every problem, we're going to find an R, sorry for the typo, we're going to find an R it, called the radius of convergence, and then we're going to know that in this interval from A minus R to A plus R, the interval of convergence at ev every point in that interval, in fact, the series will converge absolutely. Outside that interval, so points more than bigger than A plus R or smaller than A minus R, the series will diverge. And at the endpoints, so at these specific points here and here on the interval, sorry about that, anything could happen. Those you have to check separately. Maybe they converge absolutely. Maybe they converge conditionally. Maybe they diverge. Which means at the end of the day, when you um, your interval of convergence may have um, parentheses like this, open endpoints. It may have closed endpoints. Another typo here. Let me fix that temporarily. It may have one open and one closed parentheses here, or the other closed and the first open. Any of those could happen. Also, just to let you know, R can be zero, in which case it only converges at A and nowhere else. That's the interval of radius zero centered at A. R can also be infinity, and then the series converges for every real number. Um, so I want to show you how to find this. We're going to spend a lot of time practicing this, but first I need to give you a little practice with some absolute value stuff. This expression, a minus r is less than x, is less than a plus r, so telling you x is between a minus r and a plus r, um, that interval, that comes up a lot. So let's put in numbers, let's call a3 and r2 just so we can play with it. So we're looking at a number line. And then a is 3, and then r is 2. So a plus r is 3 plus 2 is 5. a minus r is 3 minus 2. Is 1. OK? And the point here, when I say, 3 minus 2 is less than x is less than 3 plus 2. I am saying that x is between these two numbers. Okay. Another way to say that is that the distance between any x, any point in here, and a is less than 2. Right. The numbers between 1 and 5 are all a distance less than 2 from 3. Okay? And you can see that from this expression in two steps. If we subtract 3 from all three sides of this inequality, we get x minus 3 is between 
negative 2 and positive 2. Uh, and that's saying if a number is between negative 2 and positive 2, the simple way to say that is its absolute value is less than 2. Okay, so we're going to go back and forth between this expression and this expression. The, at the distance between x and the center of the series is less than the radius. Okay, just like that's how radii work in two dimensions. The distance between any point in a disk and the center of the disk is less than the radius of the disk. Okay, I want to show you a first example, and then in the next lecture, I will um, I will describe it to you as a process. The way you find the interval of convergence for let's say this expression, 1 over k times 3 to the k times x minus 1 to the k. So this is centered at 1. Is first, you use the ratio test. Okay. So my page breaks are really unfortunate here. So the ratio test says limit absolute value. On the bottom, you put your series. There's an x in it, no, no sweat. Just play, play along with the x. On the top, you rewrite that, and everywhere you see a k, you put a k plus 1. In parentheses if necessary, otherwise you don't do anything. Okay. Um, first thing we do with this, I'm going to make this bigger is take care of the absolute values. Remember, most of these things, 3 to the k plus 1, k plus 1, k, 3 to the k, are positive. The absolute value doesn't change them. But remember, 2 to the k, the absolute value is 2 to the k, but minus 2 to the k, the absolute value is 2 to the k. So here, where we have x minus 1 to the k, it depends on whether x minus 1 is positive or negative. It could be either. So the way we cover our bases is we take the absolute value of x minus 1. So the effect, this will always be the case, the effect of that absolute value is it just passes through everything and stops at the x minus a's. So now, don't worry for the time being about x, the fact that x is in it. Just do your all the things you usually do with the um, ratio test. So. You flip the denominator over, so k and 3 to the k come to the top, and x minus 1 to the k goes to the bottom, and then you bring friends together. So k goes with k plus 1, uh, 3 to the k goes with 3 to the k plus 1, and x minus 1 to the k plus 1 goes with absolute value, goes with absolute value of x minus 1 to the k. Each of these you deal with in the usual way, okay? And there's really nothing new here to see. k over k plus 1, as k goes to infinity, throw away lower order terms, that becomes 1, okay? So that becomes 1. x minus 1 to the k plus 1 over x minus 1 to the k, absolute values. Subtract exponents, you know the drill, that becomes the base to the first divided by 1, and by the same token, 3 to the k over 3 to the k plus 1, subtract exponents becomes 1 over 3 to the 1. So now, remember the ratio test says that this converges absolutely if this quantity, this limit, is less than 1. Okay, And it's going to diverge. If it's greater than 1, we don't know in between. So what is this quantity? It is absolute value of x minus 1 over 3. The series is going to converge whenever that's less than 1 and diverge whenever it's greater than 1. And in between is what we don't know. So that's easy to work with. We take, we just try and isolate the absolute value 
So we multiply both sides by 3, and we get absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 3. That makes 3 the radius of convergence, okay? The series is sent, the interval is centered at 1 and has a radius of 3. So you can either right away say, oh, that's all the points from 1 minus 3 to 1 plus 3. Or you can remember that if the absolute value is less than 3, then the quantity is between 3 and minus 3. And then add 1 to all three sides. And this is a typo. It should be minus 2 is less than x is less than 4. So we know that the series converges absolutely when x is in this interval, minus 2 to 4, and diverges when x is bigger than 4 or less than 2. But right at the endpoints, when x equals 4 or x equals negative 2, the ratio test gives you 1 and you don't know. So those, you have to use a different test. Okay. So the next step, once you've found the interval apart from the endpoints, you have to check each endpoint. So a is 1, the radius is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. We plug each of those values in for x in the original expression. So 1 over k times 3 to the k times x minus 1. Notice when you do that, 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 to the k and 3 to the k cancel out. That is always going to happen that term with x in it is going to turn into an exponential and it's going to be perfectly designed to cancel out what other exponentials are there. If it's not, you just figured out you got your radius of convergence wrong. Go and fix it. Okay. So when x equals 4, we get the series 1 over k. We know all about that. It's a p-series with p equals 1, so it diverges. So at 4, the series diverges. At negative 2, we get negative 2 minus 1, that's minus 3 to the k, and these guys perfectly cancel out, except, right, this is minus 3 over 3 is negative 1 to the k. So when I said all oh, the exponentials cancel out, I mean except you may get a minus 1 to the k, which makes your series alternating. In fact, this is the alternating version of the other endpoint. That's what's usually going to happen. Once again, we've been here before. Minus 1 to the k over k is, we know it's not absolutely convergent because 1 over k, sum of 1 over k converges. But if you go through the alternating series test, which we've done a million times, you see this converges conditionally. The actual interval is minus 2 to 4. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's erase that. So sorry. The interval is minus 2 to 4. It includes minus 2 because the series converges conditionally there and excludes 4 because the series diverges there. That is our final answer. Next time I'm going to show you how to get that in general and do some. And that tells us that the whoops, 